Sometimes in church, people will talk about how God spoke to them or that they felt God's presence. And you might think to yourself, that sounds awesome, but uh, what are you talking about? How did you know that was God? Is there something I'm missing here? I know I've thought that. In the first episode of this series, we discussed how all these ways of encountering God work together to become a beautiful relationship that happens over time and transforms the way we move throughout the world. And so if you're ready to have that kind of relationship with God, how do we recognize him? So I ended up calling several of my mentors and asking them how they recognize God's voice. And I noticed a unifying thread that tied their advice together. But before we get to that, let's talk about what we mean by recognize, because there's a difference between recognizing someone and identifying them. For example, here's a picture of me with my buddy who is also named Matt. And when you see the picture, you figure out who I am, because even though I look a little different, you recognize me. And other Matt, well, you can identify him through elimination, but you might not say that you recognize him because you've never seen him before. So think about what that means when it comes to recognizing God. Do we already have a shared story with God that can help us recognize him? My mentors kept bringing up this famous passage in the Bible where Jesus compares himself to a shepherd whose sheep recognize his voice. The story tells us what the sheep already know about the shepherd, the thing that they're recognizing. The shepherd is good. He sacrifices his life for the sheep. And you're part of that big story. Jesus has already died and risen for you. And so the voice that we're looking to recognize is one of love and care, a voice that is concerned about our well-being and willing to sacrifice for us. That's what we've already received from Jesus. And so that's what we're looking to recognize. But let's be real. It can be hard to trust that God's voice is really good. And that's not a new problem. It was also the case for those who heard God in the Bible. In the Old Testament, God tells Sarah she will have a child and she laughs. She's quite old. And so it's hard to take God's promise seriously. In the book of Acts, God tells a follower of Jesus named Ananias to go to Saul, the guy who's murdering Christians. And Ananias is like, what? No, for obvious reasons, Ananias feels like this plan is gonna be bad for his health. For a lot of us, there's fear around the idea of hearing from God. Will he force me to do something I don't wanna do? Or will he just be angry or dislike me? When you think of hearing from God, you might feel really anxious. You know, can you actually trust him? Well, let's look at how Jesus would address our concerns. He says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That doesn't sound forceful, but gentle. And Jesus also says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. That doesn't sound like he hates you, but loves you and wants to save you. Listen, skepticism, fear, even confusion are normal while learning to recognize the voice of God. But if we're willing to reconsider the tone we expect, it can transform how we receive his voice. You could get the exact same words in a text from a parent or your best friend, and the tone you expect will change how you receive that text. You can almost hear me realizing that God's voice isn't something we have to be wary of in this conversation with Wendy. I don't know why 
I haven't really considered it this way, but it's like the fruit of the spirit are the characteristics of the spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. So God's voice will be like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Especially when we're, you know, confused. God's voice comes with this peace and this calmness of it. It's okay. Actually, can we struggle together? Like that's God's voice. So the thread running through my mentor's advice was that when we let the loving sacrifice of Jesus set the stage for our encounters with God, then we'll be able to understand the gentle, loving tone of his voice. But even if we accept the goodness of God's voice, life is still hard. If God wants a relationship with us, but sometimes feels far, that seems like a counterproductive thing for God to do, maybe even a little foolish. And when we're trying to follow God, but life still comes with pain and suffering and God doesn't stop it, he can seem kind of weak. And so it's worth looking again at the life of Jesus because it shows us how complex following God can be. Before Jesus is crucified, he asks God to stop what's about to happen because he feels overwhelmed to the point of death. And then on the cross, he cries out, my God, why have you forsaken me? The apostle Paul admits that people in his day were perplexed by the death of Jesus. Why would Jesus, if perfectly righteous, ever have to experience the absence of God? That makes no sense. That seems foolish. And if he's the Messiah, sent by God. Why would he have to die? That seems weak. And then Paul says, this foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans. And God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Basically, Paul is saying, don't be fooled by appearances. Even if the death of Jesus seems foolish and weak to us, God's wisdom and power were at work. The love, joy, and peace of God can come through things we don't expect. And Jesus actually invites us into something similar. He says, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. Now, he isn't really talking about you or me being crucified literally, because that's not something we can do every day. But his metaphor does invite us to live a self-sacrificial life where we give of ourselves for the sake of others the same way he did. And we can all admit that plan feels foolish and weak compared to the plans we had for ourselves. And when we feel that way, Jesus is asking us to trust his wisdom and power. Okay. This is where I want to be really clear because I'm, I'm not trying to wave away the problem of suffering or when God feels absent. Just because there can be redemption to pain doesn't make it easy. It isn't. And it doesn't make it okay if someone is harming you. It's not. The world is not as it should be. And the world is in such a mess that it can get in the way of our hearing. I think the recognition of God as revealed through the person of Christ crucified, but who didn't stay crucified, who has risen and, and takes me up into the life of God with him, is an experience of being hooked into a future that is mind-blowing. And it gives me staying power so that the suffering of life doesn't squash my capacity to hear God who is with me through Christ. We can trust Jesus because he didn't just die on a cross, he rose from the dead. And he wants you to share in that resurrection too. So whether your life is in a moment of tragedy or triumph, Jesus knows what it's like. He can meet you there. He will be honest about your pain and hopeful about what's to come. I find it comforting to imagine the moments when encountering God feels easier, like, the notes of a song, and when encountering God feels harder, like the rests in between. The notes and the rests are all working together, moving toward a beautiful resolution, like how we'll see him face to face and all things will be made new. What my mentors taught me was that recognizing God 
begins with Jesus, first in how he loved us and laid down his life for us, but also in how he's with us when we suffer, offering us the hope of a resurrection. So when it comes to recognizing God's voice, there's just one central question. How well do you know this person, Jesus, the historical person of the Gospels? How well do you know him? Not what you've been told about him and not what you've heard about him, but how well do you actually know him? This series was made to spark face-to-face discussion about encountering God. And so I think it's best used in a church or a small group or a ministry, that kind of thing. And so if you'd like to download a free copy of all three videos, discussion questions and more, go to the link in the description of this video. All that can be in your inbox in a matter of moments.